about to witness the sickening mess that is called the Punk Ass Creepypastas. Hello again, everybody. This here is your boy Tommy Valentine, aka Punk Ass, with episode 3 of the Punk Ass Creepypastas. Now, for the third episode, I have called upon help, or should I say a collaboration, with, with, this is my world yet again. I enjoy his work, I enjoy working with him, so I've decided, hey, let's do another one together. So, uh, today's, uh, project, well, when I submitted it, when I submitted it to him, it was, uh, just a little, just a tad bit incomplete, uh, there was a lot of details missing, so I, I asked him, so I asked him, hey, could, hey, uh, take this and kind of, kind of, Put your own uh, own take on to it, and he did a really good job. I enjoyed his. I enjoyed the video. I I watched it numerous times. But um, anywho, let me talk a little bit about today's creepy pasta. Okay, today's creepy pasta is supposed to be a Thanksgiving style story, focusing on the death of Native Americans, which is the sole purpose of um, well, maybe not the sole purpose of Thanksgiving, but in relation to Thanksgiving. So, um, I've decided to write a Thanksgiving type horror story, Creepypasta, and, uh, and he read it on, he read it on his channel, well, he modified it and then recited it. So, uh, on his channel, he calls it Thanksgiving Horror, but here on this page, we're gonna stick to the original story, Ladies and gentlemen, let's go over to Mario Jones from This Is My World as he reads On the Burial Grounds. All events in this creepypasta series are fictional, and any resemblance to real events is coincidental. Now, today I've been graced with another story from Peter Punk Ass. This one's called Thanksgiving. Um, I, I looked over his story and he said I can make any changes I want to. Being the person that I am, I like adding my own twist to things. So I took the story and I did a lot of major changes. So if you don't like the story, Peter Punk Ass, I can re-record it on a different day. And if you like it, put it in the comments and say so. So this girl, She's a little girl, she's about 14 years old. Her name is Sandra. Now, every year her family has Thanksgiving at her aunt's house, her aunt Julie's house. Julie was a very successful woman, very ambitious, always trying to, you know, get the next best thing for her family. She pretty much, um, well, Grandma Julie, she pretty much built the family on the wealth. So, you know, whoever, the granny makes a whole bunch of money, she distributes it out to the rest of her family. She said she didn't want to be you know, greedy with her money. So one day she buys a plot of land that's worth a lot of money. So she bought a plot of land that was worth a lot of money because it had a lot of oil and stuff in it, everything that they need to make a whole bunch of money. The contractors warned her, this land belongs to the Indians. The land that you bought is the Indian burial ground. I don't think you should build here. She said, I want to build my house on this land. The sun shines just right, right here, and I want this land. Now, they warned her, they urged her, but he, they went along with it anyway. Um, when the, car, the contractors were building on this land, about 50 of them died before the completion. Um, so she obviously paid off, you know, the money for the loved ones and whatnot. But it was all like mysterious accidents, you know, a buzzsaw went away, a piece of wood slipped under somebody's feet while building the roof of the house. A strong wind and pushed about 25 people off. They had to actually wear harnesses so that they can actually stay up there. So, through all this, her house got built, and she hasn't seen anything strange since. But this particular Thanksgiving, Julie did some research and realized that 
her granny's house was built on the Indian burial ground. Now, Julie, she always, everything equal. Not Julie, I'm sorry. Uh, Sandra, everything equal. You know, she fought for, you know, black people's rights, you know, the Mexican rights. You know, she's definitely passionate about the Indian rights because she said what we did to them was wrong. When she, when she realized that, she said, I'm going to talk to my granny, Julie, and say that, you know, you built your land on uh, you built your house on some bad land. It belonged to the Indians. I would like for you to move it so you can honor the Indians. Just she figure saying this to her granny is going to make her granny change her mind and move the house. So she had ambitions of doing that and also having everybody in her family, it's going to be about 12 people there, to you know apologize for what we did to the Indians and be thankful for the land that we do have that we was able to share with us. So her dad takes it there. Her dad knows that her his daughter is a strong activist. He said, now, Sandra, can you please leave the activist side of you at home so we all can enjoy a nice Thanksgiving? She said, yeah. She's not going to do it, but she said, yeah. So they get to the house. You know, everybody greeting everybody. You know, her uncles came. Her dad and mom was there. Then she seen her granny and her grandpa. Her grandpa, you know, he just kind of rode the flow. He a stay-at-home person. You know, he retired a long time ago. So, you know, his wife didn't do all the extra money making. So she was so happy to see her granny. She like, Granny Julie, Granny Julie, runs and hugs her and everything. She said, uh, I'd like to talk to you about something. So she said, go ahead. She said, I did some research and your house is built on top of an Indian burial ground. It would be real awesome of you if you could just move your house about two miles to the west, you know, no big deal, and you will be off their land and the Indians can honor their loved ones and dead ones. She said, honey, that's so thoughtful of you. But I like it here, the sun hits just right and I can see the sunset. Uh, sunsets and sunfalls, you know, sunrise. You know, I love everything about this area. So disappointed, she said, well, can you at least, you know, apologize for what you did to the Indians about disrespecting their burial ground? She said, oh, I will. I will make sure I get thanks and I'll make sure I apologize, you know. It's no big deal. So she said, at least I get one thing out of it. When she looked up, um, out the window, she was um, she seen that the sun was setting. She saw it was, it was nice, but she didn't like the way things went down. To the left of her was a mirror, and when she looked in the mirror, she seen a figment of uh, she seen a shadow of a person that had um, feathers sticking out. It looked like an Indian, a shadow of an Indian on the wall. So she looked behind her, and nobody was there. And she looked at the mirror, and the mirror just shatters. So she started getting a bad feeling. She felt like a cold wind was in the house after that. It was like a cold chill in that particular area. And she just didn't feel like the whole situation. She runs and she tells her dad, and he said, maybe, you know, she had the air wrong or something. Don't worry about it, Sandra. Just, you know, get ready to set the table. So she's setting the table and she's trying not to think too much about it, but she just had an airy feeling. So she told her cousin, who was about 13 years old, you know, he he don't believe in anything. He just he don't believe in spirits or nothing. He just believes that whatever in front of you is real. So she tells him, he said, look, you're you're acting a fool. Don't make a fool of yourself again this year, Sandra. Nobody's here, nothing's here. Relax. So she's like, no, maybe he's right. She sets the table and the fork falls off the table. When she picks up, um, she goes to pick up the fork, she hears a voice that goes, um, leave, leave now and be spared. She looks up and it was just her cousin, you know, playing tricks on her. She said, uh, why would you do that? Her cousin's name was Roderick. She said, why would you do that, Roderick? He said, oh, just calm down. It's just me playing, I'm playing around. Nobody's here. When she picks up the fork, she heard in her other ear, leave. There, Roger was already long gone. So she just shrugs it off and sets the table. So everybody sits down at the table. 
and um, the granny stands up. You know, she changes a little bell. She's like, you know, but the rich people do with their glasses. They beat the glasses for some reason. So um, she sounds like to make a toast to this year's Thanksgiving. And I want everybody to go around the table and say what you are thankful for. So you no, know, everybody's going around. Her rich cousin was like, I'm thankful for this new flat screen TV I got. I can watch football in 1080p and, you know, everything's so clear. It's like water. Everybody was like, okay. You know, and that's it. She sits down. And then everybody went around the table. You know, I'm thankful for and all the items and materialistic. So it gets down to Sandra. And Sandra's like, well, I'm thankful for the fact that I have all my family here. And I also want to apologize to all the Indians that were killed in the making of this land that Granny has built her house upon. And the Granny's like, oh, that reminds me. I am thankful for the fact that the contractors didn't sue me for all the times they hurt themselves to this house. Everybody laughs and whatnot. So I'm also thankful for my family and for the beautiful money that I'm able to flourish out with and sits down. Sandra's like, don't you want to also apologize for what the Indians had to go through? She said, for what, honey? This is our land. This is America. We found it. And in saying that, a light flashes and cuts off. It's completely dark in the house. When the light comes back on, Roderick is hanging on the wall with two arrows in his shoulder with a sign, a bloody writing that said, get out, but leave the granny. Everybody's like, okay. The granny's like, okay, who's playing jokes now? Who is playing jokes now? And everybody's just appalled. And uh, the parents of Roger was like, get my son down now. He's screaming at the top of his lung. They pull the arrows out the wall and break the power. You know how to get the arrow out. You know, you gotta push it all the way through bandage them up, whatnot. And then the lights cut off again, and cut on, and it says, we're serious. Last warning. So the aunt, like, I am not leaving my house. I didn't built this house. This is my land, my house. I bought it. It belongs to me. Just then, an eerie, cold feeling just pushes through the dinner table area. Lights cuts off, and then it heard dragging. It heard somebody being dragged in the mail, just scraping along. And Roger's dad, the lights cut back on. Roger's dad was gone. And now everybody is thinking like, this is no longer a joke. They heard him in the kitchen. They run in the kitchen, and he's been scalped. It. And this, and the um, the writing on the wall appears again, and said, you had your chance. Then after that, you can hear in the um, under the under the floors knocking on the floors. This then the floors just open up. So apparently she built the land on the wrong land. These people were called the Thunder um, Blue Thunders uh, tribe. They were known for slaughtering um, the people who tried to raid their land. So the floors open up from under the dinner table and they just flip the whole table over. Everybody start running throughout the house. They look, run outside, their cars, all the tires were slashed. And people left and right just dropping dead. Some being dragged to their room where they've been scalped it. Others been stabbed, arrows through their chest. Everybody, only people that's left is Sandra, her dad, her mom, and her um, granny. They're crying in the middle of the floor, wondering who's gonna be next. Then suddenly, Sandra's dad gets pulled up. You know, he's getting choked on um, his feet dangling and everything. Then the spirit comes through, and it's actually the chief of the um, Blue Thunder tribe. He looks down at Sandra. He was like, you're the only one that decided to apologize for what happened to my tribe. He said, 
we will spare your life, Sandra. But the others, the others have to go. She said, please, not my dad, please. He said, I'm sorry it had to be this way. And just slashed her dad's throat and stabbed the mom in the back and just dragged the knife along her spine. Just come all the way down, ripping her like furniture you don't want. <laughs> and then they looked over at the granny. He said, we have gave you many, many chances stop building your house on our land, but you continue to ignore them and the people who are die, who die to build your land. Now you will feel the full force of the Blue Thunder tribe. They grab her and they drag her down under. Before they can finish dragging her down under, they look over at Sandra, was like, and I'm a, that's, sorry, they was like, and they said, thank you. Thank you for notice, uh, recognizing our tribe. Please live well. And just go on the ground, and the ground just come back together like nothing happened. Sandra calls the police. They don't believe a damn thing she's saying. They think she went crazy, especially after the traumatic experience. They think she just lost it. So they um, they admit her in a, what's the looking psych, psych, psych work, that's what they call it. Yeah, right, it's right, psych work. And she was rocking back and forth. She was like, Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder. Tribe. Tribe. That's all she says all day. Blue Thunder Tribe. Blue Thunder Tribe. They give her pills to relax, but they ain't helping. That's all she can say. You know, years passed by. And she seen writing on the wall. And she just loses it. And she, uh, she asked a nurse, um, over, um, she asked the nurse, she said, um, please, can you cut my sandwich, please? As the nurse um, cut her sandwich, she got some nice and just stabbed in her throat, killing herself so she can get the images out of her head. And that's the Thanksgiving horror.